Hey, you guys seem to love useless information, so in this video I'm going to waste 15 minutes of your time to tell you some more useless information, which you'll most definitely forget about as soon as you click off this video. Ready? Let's go. All wheelie bins in GTA 5 have text written on them that says Rockstar North. It's quite an easy joke to be made here, but I'm not going to be the one to make it. In all metro stations, you can find this beta map of Los Santos. As you can see, there are many missing roads from this map, including the entirety of the airport. If you shoot a phone from a phone box, it makes a slight dinging sound. The Tesseract supercar in GTA Online is immune to catch up in races. If you don't know what catch up is, it basically just slows down the person in first place, which can help other people catch up. For whatever reason, catch up has little to no effect on the Tesseract. Around the holidays, you could find a Christmas tree in your apartment. If you take a closer look at these presents under the tree, you can see the Rockstar logo. Equipping scuba gear on a Kasatka will slightly change your face. There's a book in Franklin's house that's called Red Dead, that was written by Jay Marston. This is quite a clear easter egg to the Red Dead Redemption games. The cool thing about this is that it could be canonical, as Chuck Marston, John Marston's son, is shown to love reading books. It's not too far of a stretch to assume they would write his own book about his experiences with the Vandaling gang. The Perico pistol hasn't got any sway when you aim down the sights. This is a very slight oversight from Rockstar. F1 cars have so much downforce that you can quite easily drive upside down while in this tunnel. Kosatka translates into killer whale in English. There are 1,038 Rockstar created jobs, and yes, I counted all of them. On this building, there's some stairs that lead to this weird looking room. The window in this room seems to be reflecting out of bounds, as seen by these weird textures. At this location above these shops, you can find some stairs that lead into an unused shop interior. I have no idea why they put this place in the game. Pretty much all parachute pickups are glitched. They can be seen floating way too high or being in the ground. At this location, deep in the water, you can find a mysterious hatch that looks to be a reference to the TV show Lost. If you get close enough to this hatch, you can hear some Morse code. That translates into, hey, you never call, how do you fancy going bowling? Which is a reference to the annoying phone calls you'd get from Roman in GTA 4. How much can our GTA Online characters carry? If we add up the weight of all seven assault rifles, three snipers, 9 shotguns, 7 heavy weapons, all throwables, 17 melee weapons, 15 pistols, 4 MGs and 6 SMGs, we get an estimate of 332.5 kilograms, or 733 pounds. Let's not forget the 95 snacks, 10 body armour, nano drone, parachute and phone that you can also carry, which are estimated to be 94 kilograms. This brings our total up to 426.5 kilograms, or 940 pounds. And of course, Let's not forget the ammo for the weapons. You can carry 9,999 pistol ammo, assault rifle ammo, SMG ammo, shotgun ammo, sniper rifle ammo, minigun ammo, and MG ammo. Plus 50 rockets and 20 grenades for the grenade launcher. This all equates to 7,460 kilograms, with a total weight of 7,886.5 kilograms, or 17,386.5 pounds. This equates to 7.8 tons, that a character is casually just carrying around in their pockets. This is the equivalent of carrying an African bush elephant or a semi truck on your back and being completely fine with it. It's fair to say that our characters are goddamn ripped out of their minds. The Perico pistol is the only weapon in the game that makes your controller vibrate while reloading. These keycard scanners in the casino can be broken if you run into it. This statue called Yellow Dog with Cone was turned into quite a big meme among the GTA community. It started with this teaser for the casino update, which shows four pieces of artwork, one of which was the Yellow Dog with Cone statue. When the update came out, for some reason, this statue was nowhere to be found. People were understandably upset, as this magnificent piece of art was not available. The Yellow Dog eventually came out a little while after the casino update dropped, and players could finally have this glorious mutt in their apartments. When it came out, someone decided to make a subreddit, which focuses purely on worshipping the Yellow Dog. It even had its own Urban Dictionary page. Due to all this commotion, Rockstar brought out some limited edition Yellow Dog with Cone apparel. There are five different UFO models in the game. There's one that can be found underwater, one that can spawn above Mount Chiliad, one that can spawn above the Sippy Camp, one that can spawn above Fort Sangudo, and one that spawns during the gun running resupply easter egg. If you haven't got a house in GTA Online, and you set your spawn location to random, 
When you switch sessions, you can sometimes find your character standing outside of a hotel. It's likely that hotels were supposed to be part of the game from the start, as there's an interior in the game called MP Hotel. MP meaning multiplayer. This hotel interior has only been seen in a Jack Howitzer TV show, and more recently in a casino heist prep. In the mission Breakdown Recovery, you have to drive a wastelander with this destroyed ruiner on the back. This ruined ruiner model is just an edited version of a normal ruiner, which means it has the same driving controls of the ruiner. Because of this, modders can quite easily spawn this vehicle in and drive it around to mess with people. If you shoot an RPG at the ground and pause just at the same time, your character will be inside of the explosion. Moreover, if you go to the Rockstar editor and then go in director mode, it will show this unique error message. Director mode is not available whilst dead. After accepting this alert, you'll spawn outside of a hospital with this weird grainy wasted filter. In this very recognisable artwork for GTA 5, you can see that the background is completely wrong. First of all, the pier is way shorter than it actually is in game. And second, the skyline of Los Santos is in the wrong place. If the camera is facing this direction in game, it should only be able to see the skyline of the airport. It should be impossible to see any of these skyscrapers while the camera is facing this direction. In the Pacific Standard Bank, shooting these chandeliers with a minigun will cause them to uncontrollably swing. The best thing about this is that the chandeliers will never stop swinging, and other players can see it too. In GTA Online, there's a random glitch that distorts your phone's sound effects. Here's what it sounds like normally. And here's what it sounds like when distorted. I have no clue what triggers this glitch, or why it happens. If you wear any one of these low beanies, your friends will for some reason see their character's face on your character. This will only work if both of you are in different sessions. Here's an example of what I mean. This is what my friend looks like when I'm in his session. And here's what he looks like after I leave his game and find a new session. As you can probably tell, his character now has all of my character's facial features. You could probably mess with your friends by doing this. At this location, you can sometimes find some unusually large cockroaches. These cockroaches will sometimes go off this ledge and fly over the water. I would definitely not like to be here in real life. When you get your clothes wet, it takes 1 minute and 10 seconds for them to fully dry. It doesn't matter if it's a sunny day or night, it still takes the same amount of time to dry. If you equip the double action revolver and then tap the weapon wheel button, which in my case is LB, you'll spin the revolver around. This cutscene from the MC Clubhouse darts game is glitched. Most of the time, it will randomly select any player from your session and use their character model in the place of your one. Here's a few examples. You all practicing then? You ain't drunk enough to be throwing darts. Come drown your sorrows when you're done. The Vulcan was a cut aircraft in GTA 5 that got repurposed into the Hydra. It used the exact same model as the Hydra, the only difference being these letters on the back wing, which says V-22 instead of the H-27 we have from the Hydra today. In the second trailer for GTA 5, the Vulcan is shown to have been able to fire two missiles at once. There's also an unused description of this vehicle from the Warstock Cash and Carry website. Laser sights were most likely supposed to be part of the game, as there are some beta screenshots showing the police using lasers. There's also some mentions in the game files that shows laser sights potentially being an attachment for assault rifles and pistols. It's unknown why this was cut out of the game. In the Brady Games official guide for GTA 5, there's a section where it shows all of the different weapons and weapon upgrades you can get in the game. If we go to the RPG and look at its upgrades, it says they can buy grip that increases the stability and accuracy of the RPG. In the actual game however, no such grip can be found. The fire extinguisher is a weapon that is commonly used by firefighters. It was originally supposed to be usable by the player, however, this was removed sometime during development. Fortunately, it's still possible to use this weapon if you give it to yourself with a trainer. It actually functions surprisingly well, apart from the fact it doesn't actually put out fires. Rockstar made an official Life Invader website that mimics the in-game version. If you sign in using your social club account, you can get some pretty cool perks by following slash stalking these accounts. If you stalk Warstock Cash and Carry, you can get 10% off your next purchase. This is also the same for Legendary Motorsports and Alitas Travel. You can even get a free can of Spronk. To be honest, this is probably the least useless thing in this video. There's a unique type of jerry can in the game called a Hazardous Jerry Can. This jerry can can only be seen and used during the first prep of the maintenance approach for the casino heist. There was a glitch that allowed anyone who played this mission to keep this jerry can even after the mission was over. However, this has now been patched, which now makes it an extremely rare item to have. The golf club midi weapon can't be purchased. 
The only way you can get one is by either killing a golfer and taking theirs, or by picking one up in a player made job. The rubber gun is a weapon that was cut from GTA 5, presumably very early on in development. From this image in the game files, it appears to have been a blue tinted Uzi. It's the same as the gold SMG model from the Ballad of Gay Tony. There's also a rubber shooting sound effect in the game, which could have been a sound effect that the gun used. If I would have to guess, I would say that this weapon was going to be a non-lethal joke weapon. Here's a little concept of what the gun could have looked and sounded like if put into the game. There are 12 unique NPCs in the casino that have their own individual names and personalities. We have Dean and Carol, a married couple that often bicker. Carol seems to be the instigator of most of their quarrels, and Dean seems to always try to defuse the situation and appease his wife. There's Vince, a depressed and drunk man who is recently divorced with his wife. Because of this, he is drowning his sorrows and gambling his last few dollars that he has. Because of being divorced, he's homeless and presumably hasn't got anywhere else to go. He often complains out loud about the terrible situation that he's in. And now we have Taylor and Lauren. They're at the casino having a hen party to celebrate Lauren getting married. Taylor seems to be the loudest and more extroverted one out of these two. She's often being loud and is the only one that tries to instigate social games such as Truth or Dare or Dare Cards. She also has this shirt that says Here for the Fling, which probably means that she's looking to get laid. Lauren, on the other hand, is a bit more introverted, probably because she's nervous about her big wedding day. Next up is Beth, who looks and sounds like she's completely stoned. This is proved by her saying that she mixed up her CMD and THC. There's not much more to really say about her, other than she always seems really transfixed on Lucky Will for some reason. There's Gabriel, a rich Italian man that often gloats about his wealth. He also likes to insult the player's fashion sense whenever you get too close, and he frequently insults America and Americans. Overall, he's quite a snobby guy. Now we have Eileen. A rather foul-mouthed and elderly woman that insults the slot machines when she loses. She doesn't talk about anything else really, so not too much is known about her. Ushi is a very rich Chinese man who was in a real estate business with his father. He mentions that his father is good friends with the Cheng family, who are billionaires, so it's no wonder why Ushi is so rich. He often mentions his love for America. He loves the movies, the shows, and the casinos. Now we have Curtis. I'm not the best with American accents, but I would assume that he's from Texas. He seems to be a very confident and well-established poker player, often giving some questionable advice to other players on the table. And of course, let's not forget his best quality, his awesome hat. Next up is Blaine. He looks and sounds to be somewhere in his 30s. I would assume that he's going through some sort of midlife crisis, as he's trying way too hard to tell jokes and use lingo that he doesn't seem to fully understand. Apart from that, it sounds like he loves to party and drink. Last but not least, we have Calip. He's an overly anxious and delirious man, who seems very paranoid about the casino always listening and watching him. After listening to some of his voice lines, it's pretty clear that he either suffers from a mental illness or he's high on drugs. You can email other players in-game through the internet on your phone. Not many people actually know about this, mainly because it's almost completely useless and not practical to use at all. At full health, chain smoking 10 cigarettes in a row will kill your character in a rather slow and horrible way. Also, my character started leaving behind the trails of blood behind him while I was smoking. Don't smoke kids, it's not worth it. There's a portable toilet in the docks that if knocked over, reveals a poorly rendered portable toilet inside of it. I have no idea why this is here. If you take too many pictures while in the casino, you'll get thrown out by security. There's an unused garage interior that came out with the High Life update back in 2014. This place is huge. You would have probably been able to store around 30 or 40 cars here. In the game files, there are some unused weapon textures of a fire axe, lasso, shovel, and a megaphone. Hopefully, some of these will make a return in a future update. In the game files, there are some early concepts of a GTA 5 logo. I've got to say, GTA 5 would have been a completely different game if they actually used one of these logos. On some very rare occasions, it's possible to see a glitched out train on the tracks of Los Santos. This train won't have any engine pulling it along, which makes it look very strange and almost ghost-like. If you dial the number 1999 367 3767 onto your phone, you'll get connected to a caller known as Black Cell Phones. A few seconds after dialing this number, a small explosion would appear above your head, and your phone will have this solid black background. It's still unknown why this is in the game, or what it could mean. This metal container at the docks is completely weightless. The original concept for GTA Online was a lot different than what we have today. It was originally supposed to be built around four different gangs. The Vargos, the Police, Bikers, 
and the families. All of these gangs would battle it out in an all-out turf war over the entirety of Los Santos. This is proven by these images found on the lead graphic designer of GTA V's portfolio, which shows all of these different areas that could be controlled by the gangs. Personally, I would have loved to have seen how this idea would have played out. Welp, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed listening to those completely useless facts about GTA V. If you know of any more useless facts, then please let us know in the comments. I'll make sure to pin the most useless one. Anyway, I'll see you later.